Kaguya sama, love is war. Yes, you do. <laughs> oh, a confession, huh? Those always go well. Oh, I see this is a fairy tale. <laughs> yeah, there we go. That's more like it. Well, that's a good dark charge. Darker than I Wow, a lot darker than I expected. <laughs> and only one person can win, right? You must conquer your opponent. I mean, lover. <laughs> Another red-eyed protagonist, or red-eyed character. Interesting. Kaguya wants to be confessed to. Already a powerful start. And so much to work with. <laughs> First of all, just a minor point. Has anyone ever had an actual confession work for them? Like a gushing confession like that? I feel like for me, when things work, it always kind of happens more organically. Things are going well, hanging out with someone. And then you kind of just ask, like, what's going on? All the times where I felt the need to make the gushing confession, it was because I was aware on some level that I had no chance. You know what I mean? It was like an act of desperation. Speaking of losing. <laughs> About the whole power play thing. It's tough because in life, there's a cynical way of looking at it and there's the sort of wholesome, nice, beautiful way of looking at it, and there's probably truth in both of them, and they can exist simultaneously. Like, there is something about romantic relationships that just naturally lends itself more to antagonism, you know, because you want something. There are expectations and boundaries, right? Which just lends itself naturally to a sort of calculus, which doesn't exist, or at least doesn't exist as notably in just, like, a friendly relationship. But that's certainly not all it is. At the risk of sounding really cliche already, love or positive regard of a similar variety is something that you, the giver, benefit from giving. It's one of those rare things where you have more of it by giving it, if that makes sense. And in a weird way, loving someone else is an extension of loving yourself. But I also get the danger in that because that kind of thing is so intense and can be so addictive even, and it's so fundamental and primal to just our humanity that it's something that you end up, even despite yourself, fighting really hard to preserve. And as soon as you value something, you're more likely to be compromised because you have something to protect. And that can be terrifying. And because relationships are at, at heart a transactional thing to a certain degree, the person who loves the most is often going to be the one who is more compromised. But there's also like a higher stage where you can have both, where you can love someone fully, but sort of whittle away the other stuff, you know, the need and the insecurity that arises and the stories that you tell yourself that are wrapped up in the partner. So you can love wholeheartedly in a way that's great for you without being pulled down into the abyss by the wrong person, if that makes sense. I'm not sure what that state is like. I'll let you know when I get there. <laughs> but there's a lot of ground to cover already. Are we already getting the opening? Wow, look at this. Just right to it. No wasted time. I like it. Pains me so much I'm in disarray. <laughs> yes. 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 <laughs> Just in agreement. Nothing to add. A lot of it's a war with yourself. Wow, trip, quadruple take. That's intense. Oh, well, two, three, <laughs> four. Oh, yep. Yeah. That was equivalent, at least. And that was the last equal thing they had in their relationship. So I don't know anything about the show. I know that there's going to be a romantic element. Maybe there will be more as well. There's a lot of guns. <laughs> but, and bazookas. And whatever that weapon was. But that could all be a metaphor. Let's see, open your heart. Inside is the universe. Vulnerable universe. Curious to see how this will develop. Confess. Here we go. Are these students? I see, so we're upper crusting it once again. That's also right for drama. Uh -huh. Shinomiya Kaguya. I can't remember her name because it's the title. Alright, so she's high value on paper, I guess you could say. Very intelligent, or at least book smart, right? And this is Japan where that makes you popular. <laughs> yes, nothing could be cooler than being good in school. There's a lot of expectation on them. I wonder what they want. Gonna take a wild guess? wild guess that in true Yuki Fruits Basket style, they don't feel the way about themselves that other people seem to feel about them. These are all going to be sort of empty things at heart. Even if they can take some utility out of it, it's not. It's not like a spiritually fulfilling thing or things that they're discussing here. You're not worthy, scrubs. Epic office pan. I can't with this music and tea. I want to make you invite me to a movie. This guy's certainly aloof. Sokka would be proud. Both vehicles treat each other's ego, perhaps. Is he, did he, like, read an instructional handbook 
of attraction? This guy likes his books, huh? <laughs> but she heard that? Oh, I see. The scrubs. <laughs> Oblivion. It's <laughs> one of my favorite words in this universe. I feel like these kids need to watch Mob Psycho and like sort out their identities. Oh, versus hometown. What kind of risk game are we playing here? This is a dangerous game to play, though, because attraction is sort of intangible. People can get away with that for a really long time. I know people like this that are really beautiful, and they get a lot of mileage out of that. Speaking of looking at things cynically, but also holistically, one of the things that can be a little bit hard to swallow is that people place a really high premium on physical attractiveness. Like a really high premium. It's in a way that's sort of disturbing, but just is the way it is. Not that that's ever the whole assessment. But speaking of identity, that's sort of a tough thing or kind of a flimsy thing to lean on because it, for one it doesn't last and it will get you a lot of interest but i think it will sort of lead to an insecurity because it's always gonna be a ticking time bomb when you are basing large parts of your self-worth and identity on things that you didn't make you know she'll take a lot of utility out of her good looks and her status and all these things but at the end of the day they're not things that she made herself they're not really her in a, in a certain key sense speaking of which i think actual glue for relationships and bonds is those other things that other category of things the things that you make the person that you are if she's insufferable and if this is all she is, I suspect there's a depth that a certain person like that won't be able to reach, the lack of which will create some kind of existential threat. I mean, just take celebrities, right? They are sort of the pinnacle of people who have qualifiers that are very desirable and will get them a lot of attention, but it doesn't seem to me like celebrities get a lot of long-lasting, durable, positive self-regard out of that. It seems to be largely a source of frustration that people seem to adore them when they haven't quite matched that image with themselves, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that sounds about right for high school. Those are equipped with the lower half of their body. How to deal with the female mind lacks. All right. You guys should go together. Maybe she's not as innocent as she appears. Oh, no, don't let her see you sweat. You're slipping, man. What happened to being aloof? Saka would be ashamed. He just wanted free tickets, meanwhile, because he's stingy, apparently. Ooh, but that's... that's... They don't want to look stingy, though. Well, you know who won this game. Oh, little... Uh, cute condescension? Loving condescension? Mm, well done. Oh, she made this happen. Wow. Very involved. So getting what she wants but asking for a little bit of a meeting halfway. He's not gonna get off free. Yeah, I'll, I'll be honest, they're a little ahead of me here. <laughs> they're way ahead of me. I can't give up. I would have been destroyed by this. I can't keep up with this, these big brains. Relatable. Relatable. Ugh. When classes interrupt your chaotic, complicated romance plans. Well, that's a sad way of looking at it. You call it a draw. <laughs> or you can say they both won, you know? What's the difference? This goes long for the ride, huh? Who's that guy with his back turned? That was abrupt. Kaguya wants you to stop her. This is a ploy. This is a ploy for jealousy. Oh, he's bothered. No, 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 that's... That's a lie, he's bothered. That just hit his radar so hard, he's done. Speaking of huge gaping vulnerabilities, if you attach to the idea of being the best, and that includes ideas that other people are plebeians or what have you, you're asking for disaster because the plebeians are gonna eat your lunch by being halfway decent people because they're working hard on themselves while you're resting on your very weird laurels and they're coming for your girl, but I suspect she wrote it. Yeah, who would pass up this charming, 
humble, down-to-earth man. Whoops, speaking of vulnerable. Speaking of gaping vulnerabilities. Whole world view threatened. More, more of this adoring condescension. Well played. There's something psychologically really powerful about that. Seeing someone you like with someone else. Right, it's all a point. And he would be able to see that if he wasn't already compromised. A country. The, the risk game continues. I don't know, maybe he's a nice guy. Gosh, this is complicated. <laughs> what is with these overly complex tactics, like mob running a marathon so he can get the attention of a girl he could probably just talk to? That's weak. That's super weak. You look like a, such a scrub. Yeah, I forgot that that's a thing. Yeah, it doesn't seem like a good luck to me. Clearly. I forgot this is a thing. Like, when I was teaching in China, they actually had a no-dating rule. As if, you know? Because as we all know, there's nothing more important to the high school brain than a rule. <laughs> but this is a bad look, my dude. No? Tattling? Ooh, that's gonna rile him up even more. Geniusly played. Wow. My money's on her so far. <laughs> and then actual, actual feelings bloom eventually. Like the feeling one gets when they receive a trophy. <laughs> I feel like there's a way, a, a, a meta strategy, like above all this crap. <laughs> Like, the way forward for him is to ask her out in a way that is just above it all. The premise that they're working under is right and wrong at the same time. The thing you're trying to avoid is being the weaker one, right? If we're looking at it as a game. Being the stronger one who has less to lose. And to locate who that person is between two people, a lot of times it's going to be correlated with who is more willing to lose it. Like, who's more willing to walk away. Who values themselves so highly that they're never going to do anything that makes themselves feel bad or compromise who they want to be in order to obtain something like a relationship with someone else. But I think if we're aiming high or thinking big, there's a way to have both. You know, there's a way to approach the things you want openly and honestly without the risk of taking damage just because you're basically resolute in who you are and how you feel about yourself. Being honest doesn't make you weak or needy. Being weak or needy makes you weak or needy. Basically, the battle they're engaging in and what we're talking about here is leverage. And the amount of leverage you have is often going to come down to what you're willing to trade. The more you're willing to lose something, the more you're willing to walk away from something that doesn't suit you, in many cases, the more leverage you have. And being in that place and then speaking honestly and taking what would be a huge risk to most other people actually I feel gives you more leverage because it is a demonstration of self-worth to an extent and, and value. If you can speak your mind and go for what you want and in doing so not be placing your entire being in someone else's hands waiting to be crushed but instead send the clear image that you're going to be the same whatever the, the result, that's a, a power move in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> They're getting tired of this game a little bit, aren't they? That echo, though. Oh, no. Oh. Let's not sleep on this one. I feel like she's more than she seems. Speaking of honest confessions... Yeah, maybe. Censored? Wait, well, now I really want to read it. You were once like a being of ice. After the snow melts completely, the ground becomes muddy. What are you getting at exactly with this passionate love letter? Look at these people just losing. These plebeians. Kaguya wants you to offer her food. What she really longed for is grandma and grandpa's. Yeah, nothing, nothing says high class like wieners, but they're wiener shaped like squids. It is the wieners. Yeah, that's that's what it is. Countryside squid wieners. She's very forward. <laughs> The squeaky wheel gets the wiener. <laughs> Curious about this girl, where she'll end up. She's sort of in a dangerous position if she really is gullible or naive. She's just going to be their pawn. 
藤原さん友達だと思っていたのですけれどねそんなに俺の弁当は惨めかバカにしやがって目に物見せてくれるあっ熱々のお味噌汁だ Yes, you really blew her away with your thermos technology <laughs> never before seen on this earth そっちも So you know, leverage These people are so wound up <laughs> Who would have thought to eat soup and rice? She just her, lost her face entirely. Faceless. <laughs> their whole history flashes before her eyes as their relationship dies a painful death. I'm legit terrified. There's a fried phoenix rising from her bento box. I give it a, a 4 out of 10. Minus 6 points for no wieners. Yeah, 10 out of 10. <laughs> Immediately. Oh, he loses again. Why is he so insecure about his, his lunch? We've triggered a real area of sensitivity. Ouch. That's kind of risky, though. I feel like a lot of girls will be turned off by that. It's a pretty clear sign of attraction. You could take this game too far, send the wrong messages. This poor girl. <laughs> Broken. Broken inside. No, but it doesn't mean the same coming from you. This is a pity wiener. <laughs> this girl's totally oblivious to what's going on, though. Yeah, go figure, yeah, imagine that. Yeah, I mean, if... <laughs> it would be a real loss to throw away a friend over this. And she got a pity wiener in the bargain. Indeed. Done. Huh, interesting. And so far, she's definitely looking like the, the love, Lauren, love struck one. And blimp. Because why not? Just ride in my blimp, you know, as normal people do. Looking down at the plebs. I see, we're gonna have a larger cast of characters, huh? And we're gonna have a blimp! That's one thing that's become clear by this ending. Falling out of a blimp. Is this what love feels like? I hope this is not a metaphor and they, they actually end up in blimps. In <laughs> 18th century planes. 20th century planes? It was all a dream. That was insanely intense for the first episode. The ending is interesting because it raises the question, why? Like, why is she doing this? Why are they both doing this? And yeah, it seems like some of it is wanting to preserve self-identity and wanting the ego boost of having somebody who's really desirable in the eyes of others desiring them. And yeah, I think at first it seems pretty superficial and shallow. Of course, they're going to develop feelings for each other or have already. I also sort of don't have an issue with things being superficial. I think just by nature, when relationships start, they, they almost have to be. Like, they have to be based on something pretty shallow, at least at first. Because how do you love someone before you know them? You don't. Right? So you're attracted to things that just kind of create intrigue and create a glue or a magnetism long enough for you to get to know them. And then the good stuff sort of happens by itself. And a lot of times when relationships take shape, it's often surprising to find out what exactly that is and what exactly are the things that you value about the other person. I also feel like there's often a, a link between who I'm attracted to and things that I need to work out for myself, lessons that I haven't learned yet. And it's not obvious at all to me what that is, except in hindsight. To go back to that, let's call it cynical way of looking at things, where people are kind of a means to an end to satisfy things that we need. When you think about it, to need anything at all is, in some sense, a compromised state because it's something that you have yet to be able to manufacture for yourself and so you must give something that you have in order to get this thing that you feel is a deficiency. And what are those things going to be? Typically, they're going to be desires for things one does not have or the attempt to remedy a fear one has about oneself, which ultimately come from the same place. It's things that are not yet resolved. It's crises points in self-conceptualization. And other people are a really great vehicle for revealing that. Generally speaking, I feel like as much as we might downplay the idea, there's not really going to be that much more fundamental to, to what we need and what's going to be ultimately satisfying and also important and therefore threatening than human relationships, especially romantic relationships. I see a lot of people kind of get stuck on this rung of the hierarchy of needs. I mean, I get stuck on this rung of hierarchy of needs. It's a critical one that you kind of ignore at your own risk. But I think the beauty of that is that, like is often the case with just about any pursuit, the thing you most need is not contained in the thing itself, 
but in the lessons you learn from that thing. So no other person, no relationship is going to be a, a panacea for the soul, but you can get what you need out of it in terms of your own reflection and conceptualization of yourself. And then with that, if you are able to kind of go through that, that process in anything, but in this case in relationships, you actually now have more to give and you maybe have found someone great, found someone that really compliments you and also that you are perhaps helping in the same way you are receiving help because this is a reciprocal thing, right? Attraction works two ways. So it's kind of fine for me if things start out shallowly. If there are superficial things that bind people together, that's fine. You know, there's almost always gonna be more to it than that. And then it all just depends, like with anything, on what you do with it and how open you are and how willing you, you can go through the process and actually gain insight from it and incorporate that into the way you think about things. So I feel like there's a lot of potential in their relationship and in this show as a whole. It'll be interesting to see how this develops as they start to get deeper into what I inevitably know will be probably a pretty, pretty deep love.